remember that your that God's signature is upon your heart, that God has written the constitution of his love in you, that when they come against you in anger, you retaliate with love. When they come against you in bitterness, you can come against them with love. When they come against you as an enemy to come like a flood, God says he'll lift up a standard against your enemies and the love, the steadfast love of God. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, by your love one for another. Thank you, Jesus. The, the Bible lets us know that in these last days and times, God is looking for people who allow the constitution that lives within them. Jesus Christ, the one who gave his law, the law of love, to be seen, to be felt, to be known in the life they live. But listen carefully, this was profound. As Daniel knew and understood that the decree went forward, the Bible says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before God as was his custom since early days. Oh, mm -hmm. I wanna stop for just a moment and pause here and let you know that when those who are against you come up against you, don't hide and become a secret agent. Open your window. As God needs to be seen and heard and understood in the lives of those who stand for Jesus in these last days and times, when the gospel is being adulterated, when the gospel is being ill-spoken, when the gospel is not being rightly represented, it's not a time to go in hiding. It's a time to speak up. I will not back up. I will not shut up. I will continue to speak up until Jesus comes and takes me up with him. You see, it's so necessary for us to understand that part of our identity is in the truth. Amen. Christ lives in you. Jesus, the one who says, I am the way, the truth in the life. In the life. When you have Jesus, the truth in you. You ought to speak truth to power because when we don't speak the truth, we have no power. Come on, come on. God has put his word in our mouth that in these last days and times when the gospel is being wrongly represented, yes, sir. power in the background, don't step to the side, come but on. speak a word, declare it out loud, cry aloud and spare not, and yes. let the gospel be known because Daniel was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but he made it known in his life and in his living. And he was not afraid, even though he had come under attack from the enemy, he still lived the life above reproach, dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, yes. dare to have a purpose firm, Dare, dare to make it known. Amen. Amen. That's what God wants in these last days and times. You see, if we fail to speak up when others are speaking against the truth, we'll find ourselves on the short end of the stick. And when it's really necessary, when the greatest persecution comes, we'll have no ammunition mm. to fight the good fight. Mercy. So Mercy. Now is the time. Now is the season. Now is the purpose under heaven to share and to declare and to speak a word in due season that when we see that the gospel seems to lose its power because it's ill represented, it's not spoken of in the manner that it should, when the gospel has turned to the gospel of works rather than the gospel of grace, it's time that grace would season our tongues and that we would speak a word. Hallelujah. Amen. We declared that we would share, that we would know that the steadfast love of God is there to assist us in this hour when others are forsaking the true gospel. You see, I, I have a burden on my heart. I want the people of God to know this morning that when you see that everything that's happening around us 
seems to speak against that which is truth. God has ordained, he has put the decree in your mouth to speak up, to cry aloud, to share the truth as it is in Jesus. And if you just open your mouth, the psalmist said, I opened my mouth and God filled it. I'm here to share with you that God will fill your mouth. Don't hide from the truth and not speak up. Hide in the truth and declare it and share it so much so that people can't see the difference between you and the truth, that they can see Jesus in all that you do. You see, that's why the Bible says, so speak ye and do as they which are judged by the law of liberty. You see, our, our, our mandate is not just simply to live the truth, but to speak the truth and to do so as did Esther who declared during the time when persecution was thick around the people of God, if I perish, I perish. But if you live for God, if you know that he is your strength, you can rest assured that in the seasons of distress, that God will be there to lift you up. These men confronted the king and said, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O king, for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. The king was greatly distressed upon realizing that he had done something against someone whom he had loved dearly, but because of his temporary lapse in judgment, he had made a decree that actually went against Daniel. The Bible says that the king, when he heard those words, he was greatly displeased with himself, set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. And then at sundown, oh yes, those politicians, those uh, counselors, the governors, and the princes, and the presidents came to make good on the law that the king had decreed. And they approached the king and said, no, king, didn't you have a law that said no man was to petition or request of any God save you in 30 days? Of course, the king and looking at and hearing their response, no, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king established may be changed. So they brought Daniel before the king. And the king, the Bible says, gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke saying to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually he will deliver you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bible says that they threw him in the den. Notice, mm -hmm. when they threw him in the den, which was akin to being like a tomb, so to speak. When they threw him in the den, the Bible says, then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it. Mm his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel mm. might not be changed. Now notice something here. This seal signifies something. Walk with me now. Notice carefully. Ephesians also talks about a seal. I believe that there is a a direct correlation and connection between this seal. It symbolizes something that the people of God need to understand today. Notice Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Why? By whom ye were sealed for the day of redemption. Yes, sir. The moment you give your heart to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in to occupy the heart and yes. the says that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. 
redemption. Hallelujah. 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 The seal represents the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Not only does God give us his Holy Spirit, but it's meant to be a sign of something greater. Notice 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Everyone say earnest. Earnest. What is this earnest of the Spirit? Notice carefully the Greek word for earnest is arabon. And it literally means a pledge or down payment that the full amount will subsequently be paid. Come on, come on, preacher. Watch this now. When God put his Holy Spirit in you, it is a down payment well. of future fulfillment. Well, what is this future fulfillment? What is the, the Holy Spirit given as a down payment for? Notice carefully, one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is wind. The breath of the Holy Spirit is a down payment with a promise of future fulfillment. Go back with me, if you will, for just a moment in the Garden of Eden. When God created man in his own image, the Bible declares in Genesis 2 and verse 7, and the Lord God formed man in the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Yes. And man became a living soul. That word breath in the Hebrew is the word ruach, which literally is the same words that's used for the Holy Spirit. When God created man, he breathed his spirit into him. Yes. Might I say that if you're a blood-bought child of the Canaan king. Come on. If you are born again, well. God kisses you and puts his breath in you. He Amen. puts the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. In fact, notice in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the word that is used is for breath is emphasao. Does that sound familiar? Yes. It's the word that we use for emphysema. In other words, it is a disease that afflicts the airways or air passages. The word for Holy Spirit in the Septuagint is emphasao. Mm. Now watch this. The same creative power that was breathed into Adam to bring forth life. Mm. Notice this. In the end of time, the prophet Isaiah declares that when Jesus comes back for his people, mm. those who are in the grave, mm. God, those who went into the grave with the promise of God's return. They went into the grave and they had the breath of God in them until they expired. That same breath, which is the, the breath that God breathed when he put the Holy Spirit into Adam, it returns to heaven. But now watch this. When God comes in the clouds of glory, that same breath that went back to God, He's going to breathe it again. Yes. And notice carefully, the breath of God, as Isaiah says, to the north give up, to the south keep not back. Mm. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. The breath of God will go out to the masses and it will then resurrect the dead. Yes. Hence what I'm saying to you this morning is that the breath of the Holy Spirit is a down payment with the promise of resurrection that if you should die that's a promise send his breath again to yeah. awaken you to eternal life to live with him throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity mm -hmm. hallelujah. hallelujah how does that relate to us mm -hmm. when you seem buried in your circumstances Preach when you seem, when it seems as if Satan, that roaring lion, has placed you in a den of mm. trouble, in mm. a den of hardship, in a den of tribulation, mm. in a den of distress, the Bible lets us know that we can remember that God's breath is in our bosom. Hallelujah. In the worst of circumstances, God will resurrect you. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. You see, oh. God wants us to realize. Ooh that there are no circumstances that hold us bound. 
that no enemy who tries to put us in the grave can keep us, that there is no circumstance of sin or hardship or difficulty that God can't breathe into and give us new life. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Back in the circumstances to, to march back into the hardship, to march back into the trial and say, God has given me new life and I'm yeah. here to go back again and Lord, let's do it again. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. The of assurance of God is that when our hardships come, with thrown in desolate places, the steadfast power of God is there available to resurrect us in the worst of circumstances. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Give us the power that we need to graduate from hardship to the top of the mountain, mm. from the, from the ill-fated hand of the enemy to the glorious mountaintop, mountaintop of his glory. Amen. Oh, God is telling us this morning that when Daniel was sealed in the den, it was a sign to him yes. that deliverance was on its way. <laughs> Come on. I'm come here on. to tell you that you, weeping may endure for a night. Well, but joy comes yeah. in the morning. Yes, and sir. that's exactly what happened because the next morning mm -hmm. when the king came, you remember the king had prophesied. You say, wait a minute, pastor, the king prophesied? <laughs> Notice carefully in verse 6, so that you can be reminded of what he said. The king had given the command to throw Daniel in the lion's den. But when he spoke to Daniel, he said, your God, whom you serve continually. He didn't say he might deliver you. He didn't say he may deliver you. He didn't say, I think he's going to deliver you. Amen. He said, he will Deliver you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is in the business of putting his hand on our shoulder and letting us know it's going to be all right. Deliverance is on its way. So when the king came that morning and spoke to Daniel, he rushed to the lion's den. When he came to the den, he cried out. And the king said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually? Would uh, whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Yes. And notice what Daniel says, my God. Yes, no. his angel my God, my and God. Shut the lion's mouths. Be sober, be vigilant. Yes. For the devil, your adversary is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes. But I declare to you today that yes, when sir. he comes attacking, God will shut his mouth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remain faithful and open your mouth. Yeah. You see, when you open your mouth, it shuts the mouth of the enemy. Yes, That's sir. why the Bible says they overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. 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 The overcoming comes when you open your mouth. Don't be afraid to declare or to share that which the Lord has placed in your heart. Yes. Because at the moment of deliverance, mm. it will happen. Mm. God yes. is faithful to his promise. Amen. Hallelujah to the love, yes. to the Lamb of God. You see, once that had been seen that Daniel's favoritism, or I should say God's favor rested upon Daniel, and the king seen and understood to even greater degree the power of the living God, yes. he then turned and gave the command that those who had accused Daniel of wrongdoing well. then had them thrown into that same lion's den. Mercy. I'm here to declare to you that the Bible is always true. Yes, sir. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yes. Those who came against you, God will turn the lion on them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those who came against you and rose against your testimony, one day they're going to see that it was a big mistake because yeah. the same lion that inspired them to tell a lie will be the same lion who turns on them. Mm. And so here's what I'd like to say to you is that the reason why Daniel was able to live in the lion's den and make it through the 
through the darkness of the night in that dungeon of a tomb like a lion's den mm -hmm. was because, listen carefully, he served the lion from the tribe of Judah. Come on, preacher, come and on. Because the lion from the tribe of Judah was standing by his side, yeah. there was no lion, tiger, or any I other kind that. of creature well, that, could, that could separate him from the love of God. I and agree. therefore, there neither height nor depth, nor angels, nor yeah. principalities, no, no, no mm. things present, no things to come. Nothing can separate nothing. us from the love of God, which is nothing, here. nothing. Yes. We nothing. are greater than conquerors. We are yeah. more than ourselves. We are more than this puny body allows because the one who's greater than me, the one who has put his constitution in me, he lives. He reigns. He yes. rules. Yes, yes. He rules yes. my circumstances. Hallelujah. You see, over 6,000 years ago, another king by the name of King Jesus yes. came to a little garden called the Garden of Eden. Yes. And he prophesied your deliverance. Yes, he did. Amen. He said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. Mm between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That's a problem. Watch this now. Fast forward 2000 years after that garden event, Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would hang on that cross and he would allow, listen carefully, he would allow that circumstances and the enemy, who the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, the enemy who perpetrated death and darkness swallowed up Jesus on the cross. Mm. But I'm so thankful mm. that that's not where the story ends. Amen. Amen. Even though the snake had bit the heel, Jesus crushed his head. Yeah. Yeah. And three days later, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords mm. came forth from the tomb, delivered from the grave. Watch this now. Because he was delivered from the grave, you have received deliverance from yeah. sin, yes. from shame, yes, from deprivation, from yes. tribulation. Yes, God sir. has promised deliverance because he was delivered from the grave. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I'm here to tell you this morning, I just stopped by for a brief few moments to tell you that God has promised us deliverance. Deliverance. If yeah. you just know in your heart that he signed his name across your breast, that he has sealed you with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That deliverance is yours now and forever if you stay with the deliverer. Hallelujah. May God bless us. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For the promise of your word that you have given us your sign or your signature, your autograph. Yes, Lord. You have sealed us with the power of the Holy Spirit and that Lord deliverance is ours to experience right now. Thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a word from the Lord. Amen. Praise God Hallelujah. has promised you deliverance. You're, you're signed, sealed, and delivered. Hallelujah. Got to clean it now. Amen. Amen now, so that you can experience it later. Amen. No matter what you're going through, know that you are delivered. Yes. I love that song that says, my, 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 my name is signed up in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Preacher, that was a word. Praise the Lord. I am totally blessed. Praise the Thank Lord. you so much for bringing us that message today. Signed sealed and delivered signed sealed and delivered may we find deliverance today again in a special special way
Thank you, preacher. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank Praise you, Jesus. your name. He lived and died to buy my pardon and an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he Mike is not unmuting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen. Father God, we have heard from you today. And did not our hearts burn within us? Lord, we thank you for the reminder that you have signed. You have sealed us. And we are delivered. We are guaranteed that no matter what happens, that there is deliverance. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, who has made it all possible. 
that if we only believe in Jesus, then we are saved and sanctified and we look forward to the time when we will be glorified. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the message today that the same way you delivered Daniel, you will deliver us. Amen. Uh, some of us are going through a lot of pain, physical pain and emotional pain. Uh, some are having financial pain. Uh, some are having pain of, 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 of unemployment. Uh, not enough food to put on the table. God, whatever it is, thank you mm. for Hallelujah. the thank assurance you. that we are delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you. So God, may you now extend your grace to us one more time in this very moment. Uh, wherever we are, oh God, uh, that you will once more infuse a little more of your spirit in us that will seal us to recognize and to realize the fulfillment of a life of eternity. Yes. Thank you for the preacher and his wife. They have ministered to our hearts today. May you continue to bless them. May you continue to, to multiply their resources, O oh God, so that they will have enough and to give to others. May you bless them financially, bless them spiritually, bless them socially, bless them economically. Yes. But more than anything, O oh God, may you continue to fill them with your spirit, that they will continue to lift up the name of Jesus Hallelujah. and to declare truth, Hallelujah. precious truth, Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for blessing our hearts today. May we leave from this worship experience, never the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.